Hello, Nanagir. Welcome back to Path of Exile. Today we're gonna run tier 10 map, the Terrace. But before that, I'd like to go over a small change I made to the build. Just preparing to make it more defensive. And I unspecced Mana Flows and its supporting node, which also contained uh, 20 intelligence, uh, as well as uh, two dex nodes down here. And I've repathed over here to Wisdom of the Glades. So we've increased our amount of intelligence by 10 points. And we decreased the size of our mana pool and also the amount of natural mana regeneration that we have. Reason is, leeching mana already gives us all the mana we need, so we don't need to rely on mana regen. And specking those two points out allows us to path over to the right so we can get to thick skin faster. I realized going after dirty techniques, yes it's useful, yes poisoning on hit is useful. But we don't need more damage, we don't need more offense right now. We need to stay alive longer and we need to be able to take those heavy hits that the bosses are dealing to us. So the current plan is to path towards a thick skin. Therefore I've unspecked some points and we can actually spec another point into it over here. So starting from the next level, the next four levels, we're going to be assigning our points into a thick skin and its supporting nodes. So we take our life from 159% increased life to 181% increased life. So I've already done the math. We're going to increase from the uh, 4500 that we have now to 49 something, just shy of 5000. So we really are going to get a 10% increase to our life just from getting those four levels. So by level 90, we will have more life and hopefully more cash to afford better items. We can also spend our points into Enfeeble. And with that, let's get started. We have an area inhabited by humanoids. There are also more rares and they all have nemesis mods. We are cursed with elemental weakness. So they're gonna hit a bit harder. Monsters have 22% more life and they can't be stunned. And they gain two frenzy charges every 20 seconds. So they're gonna be slightly faster and hit slightly harder. So let's have some fun there. Vibrant colors dash across the gray, consuming man's world. We are on the terrace. We haven't done it yet, but it, it seems familiar. And also I don't see the, the text line of the shaper. Oh. At some point things do start to blur into each other a little bit. So as I'm recording this, the system notification has already gone out that the next realm, the realm is going to restart in 50 minutes for the patch 2.4.2 uh, update. So I figured let's record an episode, then at least I'll, uh, I'll have that one in the box. And however the upgrade goes, I will at least have one episode for tomorrow. And then if things go horribly spectacularly wrong, at least I can sit out a day and wait for hotfixes. Because the devs are usually good with hotfixes, but experience learns that hotfixes are not uncommon. Especially because patch 242 is of course gonna come with a uh, pretty big overhaul to the, to the rendering system. Well, there's just gonna be the 64-bit client, which will have DirectX 11 in it. So that's gonna be a massive improvement. Um, Secret to the devs are sprung on us. There's gonna be a uh, cloth simulation system built into the game as well now. So we're gonna get cloaks. At least there's gonna be uh, new smaller supporter packs that will actually have uh, a cloak as a reward. I'm not quite sure if there's gonna be any non-purchasable ways to get the cloaks. I'm gonna expect it's gonna be microtransactions, but you never know. Uh, if they ever decide to uh, bring back some of the uh, challenging uh, content then there might be rewards in there oh, I'm thinking of races and things like that with the challenge content of course and of course there are gonna be two new skills or three new skills actually it's uh, a uh, channeled fire thing a uh, blade flurry and blight which I'm personally interested in haven't heard well, most of the hype has been about the other skills 
a lot of negative hype about the blade flurry. It's in yeah, spell casting from Lee and Ripley and all that stuff. If you're any part of the community, then you have heard it. You might have participated in it. Nothing really needs to be said about that. The uh, fire thing, blah blah blah, flames, scorching flames. Yes, scorching ray. That's even better. Yes, scorching ray. Names. Um, looks interesting. Um, looks, yeah, it's uh, it's it's. Channeled. It, we, uh, it looks like some skills we've already got. It, it has some some debuff mechanics. So yeah, it, it's solid, but nothing truly spectacular. But blight is of course the thing that has caught my attention. Um, got a fondness for for degen for chaos damage, and of course blight is a channeled poison skill. So there's going to be yet another poison skill in the lineup. So I'm a uh, Probably gonna be playing around for the rest of the evening with that skill, just uh, revamping one of my old shadows and seeing if I can take a blight for a spin. So, depending on how that goes, I might uh, make it into a video to just showcase the skill and give my thoughts on it. But I'm excited for that. And of course, I'm really curious to see how the 64 bit client is gonna perform. Or look, know if there's going to be any notable improvements or if they've just made a one-for-one -one port. But no additional benefits yet. We, we shall see. There's, uh, there's not a lot of details known about it yet. And in uh, about 45 minutes, Rome's going to go down for 15 minutes, or so they say. And then afterwards, I'll be trying. So by the time you see this video... Uh, you have probably have given it a try yourself as well. So we're making pretty good progress. There's uh, not a lot of strong resistance in, in terms of monsters. This is uh, and it's, it's relatively all of auto pilotable, which. No, it, it goes to say that that's the monsters themselves are not the, the big challenge here. There's no uh, no nasty damage spikes, nothing that, that truly requires my attention. And my life doesn't really move in, in funny ways. And I realize that this has been mostly just a long stretch. I figured I'd just backtrack a little bit, but I'm leaving... I'm leaving bits left and right now. That that's not good. That's one of the downsides of uh, focusing more on the talking than on the playing. Now, the gameplay itself, you can do on autopilot, so to say, if you're you know, focusing more on what you're trying to say. Things like like map awareness and, and and bigger picture thinking is a bit more difficult. Maybe. Some people can do it, but unfortunately that's not a skill I, uh, I possess. I, I can focus on one thing at a time. And everything else needs to be something that I, I don't need active focus for. Well, that's it. The... Just talking while playing is something that when I started out was also incredibly difficult. But over time I have gotten a lot better at it. But of course there's always room left to grow and always skills left to, uh, to develop. But I believe we have... Oh, there's a little bit there. Little bit there. Oh, it is a bit of a maze, right? And more mobs over there. So, besides the terrace, we've got the underground river and the quay maps, which are level 10s in the bottom left side of the map. We've got those still left to do. There is something on the other side, so 40 minutes. But after that, we are going to go back into tier 
It's to your left. At least I'm gonna go and give it a stab. I would like to run corrupted versions of the maps, but I'll definitely need to have a look for exactly what map mods we are gonna run. Corrupting a map has, of course, it can have multiple effects. It, it can corrupt it into something that's completely different. It can corrupt it in place, just reloading the mods. It, it's, um, it, it can do multiple things. So on the one hand, of course, you can try to get up a, a decent rare map and then corrupt it and hope nothing happens to it and it just stays corrupted. That's probably one of the best outcomes. Because then you pick the map that you were recently comfortable with and then you run it. Or if it gets corrupted into the same map with other mods and the mods are generally merciful, that's also okay. I probably should be get better at picking and choosing the mods and recognizing which mods are overly punishing for this build at this point in time. And maybe for the video, either go with one that is uh, doable or try it and then, oh, if it fails, run another one and actually do that one. Rather than making these very, very long videos where I fail first and then do it again and make it look slightly easier. Not saying make it look easy, slightly easier. Because the trick is all in the map modifiers. If the, the monsters become insanely tanky, then it becomes a lot harder to actually make it to the fight. And now if there's map mechanics where you have a boss with regen and you got two bosses, again, then it becomes more difficult to deal with it. So I'll have to see once we get to tier 11s and we haven't substantially improved the state of our tank. Which, you know, gaining four levels is going to be a bit of a challenge. And maybe I'll have to be just slightly more picky about the maps I run, rather than just running whatever I get. Because most of the time I just, just quality it, alk it, and then I run the map and I don't chaos it all the time to make something favorable. Well, sometimes it makes it easy, sometimes it makes it hard, but on the whole, yellow maps have so far been doable. That's it, let's do the boss. And see what we're up against. Is this with the devourer? I wonder. Ah, bears. No, it's not a devourer. Salazang! You don't look scary. Did not look all that scary. I am surprised. So a map where oh, the, the the boss is slightly more tanky, but just bigger life pool. That's okay. And then, then they're just twenty percent more tanky. But now if they got something like forty percent physical damage mitigation, then of course they become quite a bit more tanky. And for the rest of the the damage. Wasn't pretty in here. There was nothing like damage doubling or anything scary like that. But definitely, maybe getting a bit of a feel for it for what's dangerous and what's not. So in that regard, no uh, mission slowly getting accomplished. When I started out in this league, I had played low tier maps. I think I may have, may have tier played some some very very early yellow tier maps, but not a lot. I I. Didn't know all that much about them, and especially not about the higher end maps. And no, this entire league, or well, standard parallel to the Essence League, now to be technically correct. I've been getting on maps, and we're finally getting to to the end game. And especially you now, I got a little bit of a taste of, of red maps, and I got some some really inconvenient roles, <laughs> so to say. And that taught me a lot. So, oh, as far as I'm concerned. This has been a successful series so far, and I'm very eager to continue and see where we end up. But for now, I'm going to end this episode. So I'm going to thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next episode in Patch 242, hopefully on the 64-bit client. Bye-bye.